third. Over 200,000 American lives have been lost. Millions of Americans have been infected with the COVID virus. Our families have changed, our lives have changed. We've tried to adjust to the worst pandemic America has seen. We know that we have fallen short in many times of providing the resources that were needed in a timely way. I can remember in the early stages of this pandemic when in my state of Illinois, there were desperate phone calls from the governor asking if I could find some way to help in Washington or any other place to provide protective equipment for the people in the healthcare field. We know as well that many people have seen businesses close in their communities. In my hometown of Springfield, Illinois, our favorite restaurant is clinging to its business life and we're finding excuses to order food out as often as possible to keep them open. Others haven't been so lucky. Their businesses have closed and their jobs have disappeared. Millions of Americans are drawing unemployment. Many are waiting in long lines for food. Desperate decisions are being made because people are in desperate circumstances. A lot has happened since March 23rd. The reason I mentioned that date was that was the day we passed the CARES Act. It was a momentous, historic effort, $3 trillion, to try to rescue this economy, to help the American people through this crisis, to provide resources where needed. And it was overwhelmingly bipartisan. It passed the Senate by 96 to nothing. Since then, many things have happened. But we've also learned that the CARES Act was not enough. We thought this crisis would end long ago, and it didn't. Perhaps now with vaccines coming online, we'll see some dramatic changes in the few months ahead. But what are we gonna do in the meantime? Are we gonna continue to help those drawing unemployment? Are we gonna continue to help the businesses that are struggling to survive? and to help their employees make it through another week or another month? Are we gonna do what's necessary to help state and local governments who have seen losses in their revenues in historic terms? Are we going to take care to provide the logistical support for the actual vaccinations that are necessary across America? That question's unanswered because we have done nothing nothing since March 23rd. And so a group of senators several weeks ago met for a socially distant, safe dinner at one of the homes of my colleagues and talked about another approach, a new approach, a bipartisan approach to try to deal with COVID relief. If the leaders were unable to act, perhaps we could start the conversation. I signed up for that effort with a number of Republican senators and Democratic senators, and we set out to write a COVID relief bill with our staff help, of course. I didn't realize what I was getting into in terms of time commitment. We have spent literally hours after hour after hour, day after day after day, multiple times in a day sometimes dealing with the difficult issues of what America needs now in emergency relief because of this COVID-19 crisis. We've come to a general conclusion on all but one issue as to what we would propose, and we believe it should be done quickly. You see, on December the 26th, 12 million Americans will lose their unemployment insurance businesses struggling now will close between now and then if we don't do something. Unfortunately, the speech given by the Republican leader on the floor this morning suggests that whatever we came up with and proposed is not going to be taken seriously. That's unfortunate. 
I think there's real wisdom, bipartisan compromise in our proposal. It is within the power of the Republican leader to call this matter to the floor, and that's all we ask. Make it subject to amendment if you wish, but let's get this debate underway. This silent, empty chamber is no answer to the cries of American people who are desperate for help in the midst of this pandemic. Political posturing and press releases from one side or the other won't put food on the table, won't give a father peace of mind, won't give a mother the help she needs in childcare, won't give a student the broadband service they need to continue their education. There's an issue that still is unresolved, and it's the issue of liability. We don't know what to do with that, but we ought to look at the evidence. So far in this calendar year, with 15 million people infected with COVID-19, fewer than three lawsuits per state, three per state, have been filed in medical malpractice or personal injury claims. There are a lot of other lawsuits between businesses and with insurance companies by prisoners in jail saying that their confinement is dangerous to their health, people filing lawsuits against governors for issuing orders that stay at home and close down businesses. But when it comes to the personal injury claims, there are very few, very few. We know why, those of us who've been involved in the practice of law, one of the things that you have to prove to recover in a case is causation. That is rare in a case dealing with coronavirus to be able to pinpoint exactly when you became infected and what the circumstances are. That's why so few lawsuits have been filed. Senator from Kentucky is insisting that there be immunity to liability as part of any agreement. It is a thorny topic, a difficult topic, a controversial topic, but I plead with him to hold to another day the overall issue of liability. Accept this emergency bill that we have put together as a bipartisan group of senators to address this issue in the reality of the world that we live. To hold it back because of some other major issue that has not been resolved is unfair to American families and workers and students and health workers. We owe it to them to do everything in our power to help them now. How can we in good conscience go home for Christmas knowing that the day after Christmas 12 million Americans will see their unemployment insurance disappear because of our inability to act? What kind of spirit is that of any holiday season? I think we need to be mindful of the fact that there are a lot of helpless people counting on us to do something. I hope we realize that this bipartisan effort put together by a group of senators, which I've been honored to be part of, is a good faith effort to answer the basic questions of what is needed now in America and what is needed on an emergency basis. It's a good bill far from perfect. It deserves a vote on the floor of the United States Senate. If Senator McConnell has another proposal that he wants to put on the floor as well, he certainly has that right as the majority leader. But to close the door on this bipartisan effort is to reject a good faith undertaking by, by senators from both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans. I plead with the majority leader Let's not claim some political victory if this is, when this is all over at the expense of a lot of helpless people across America who are battling this pandemic. Mr. President, I yield the floor. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander. 